Yes, Bronte, we have a, a question from from last time that we didn't get a chance to address. And um, the question is, can you please explain how we can purify the roots of our action when we are in challenging situation? And this is in context of conventional and super mundane wisdom. Uh, would you repeat the question again? Yes, Vante. Can you please explain how we can purify the roots of our action when we are in challenging situations? Okay. Purify the root of our action. Of our action. Yes. Uh, roots are uh, three. Greed. Hatred and delusion. These are three main roots of our thoughts, words, and deeds. And uh, we find it in the, the what do you call them, uh, eight steps. So, what do you call uh, Normal eightfold path. Number two is right intention. Right intention is intention to let it go, intention to practice metta, intention to practice compassion. These are the wholesome uh, roots. Unwholesome roots are greed, hatred, and uh, cruelty. Greed, hatred, and cruelty. These are unwholesome roots. Therefore, we have uh, three factors always playing in circle. That is right understanding, right uh, mindfulness, and right effort. So as soon as we come to know that greed it is, a, it is, an, it is an hatred, it is an confusion, it, it is an in our mind, that very instant, we must be the, the becoming aware of it is right understanding, and at the same time we become mindful, and then we make effort. <laughs> In the first place, we always must remember we must make effort to prevent this sort of unwholesome things arising from the root, and then. Uh, we can prevent it. If we cannot prevent and if it arises, in spite of our sincere effort to prevent it, if it arises, then uh, we must make effort to get rid of it. Now, for, for getting rid of the root of our defilements uh, is the combined work of mindfulness, understanding and effort. These three work together to get rid of our unwholesome roots. And they are called sometimes and uh, unwholesome roots, greed, hate, and the, uh, what you call cruelty. Uh, can we, we can completely, totally eliminate. They are sometimes are called asava and anusaya. Asa means influxes, Anusa is underlying tendencies. All this can be eliminated slowly, gradually, by paying total mindful attention to impermanent nature. Whatever arises, passes away. That is impermanent nature. Whatever is arises and passes away is impermanent. That which is impermanent is definitely unsatisfactory. That which is unsatisfactory is not I, not me, not myself. And like this, we have to very, we have to actively participate in whatever mental state arises. Actively participate. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you, Vante. Uh, the next question is, in 
the uh, Angulima, if Angulimala, being an arahant, was beaten with sticks, what prevents a Sotapanna with bad karma from being reborn in a woeful state? So how come a Sotapanna cannot go back in a woeful state? Even an arahant like Angulimala was beaten with sticks and he's much more advanced than a Sotapanna. Ang Angulimala? Was beaten with sticks. When he went back into the village and he got recognized as being Angulimala, he got beaten with sticks by the villagers. And the question is, if this can happen, that an arahant can get beat up, then what prevents a sotapanna that has done bad karma in the past from being reborn in a woeful state? How come a sotapanna does not go back to a woeful state? I see. Uh, sotapanna cannot go back to a woeful state of existence because sotapanna has uh, uh, eliminated, he has eliminated uh, what you call self identity, doubt, and practicing attaining liberation by practicing rituals. These are the three things Sotapanna will uh, completely destroy. Once they destroy, it is not possible for that person from that time onward to commit anything, any unwholesome uh, thoughts, words, and deeds that uh, brings him to lawful, lower state of existence. In the case of Angulimala, Angulimala, after attaining Arahanthood, uh, he of course eliminated all the defilements. Uh, as he had uh, committed unwholesome deeds in the past, by killing many people, in spite of his uh, intention. He did not have any intention to kill all these people. He just wanted to have a one finger from each person. And that also was not his uh, premeditative mental state. He did not plan uh, to go out and kill people. Uh, but his teacher forced him to get a uh, thousand fingers for him as a teacher's gift, uh, so the teacher, she has, she, teacher had some uh, uh, grudge against the student, but he could not uh, uh, kill him as a student, so he wanted somebody, he wanted him to be killed by somebody else, uh, so he devised this method and asked him to get him a thousand fingers, so he thought if he goes out to kill people, somebody will kill him. That was his plan. But it did not work. And he was, his original name actually was Innocent, Ahinsaka. And that's what he was. And that is his uh, nature. His, his, uh, it was in his gene. And then uh, Buddha intervened and stopped him killing and so forth. However, since he had done some uh, killing, hurting people, uh, uh, he, he probably cut one finger, and because of that, the person later on might, uh, might have died, might have died. So, as a result of those unnoticed mental states that he uh, accumulated before he became around, as a result of that, even after attaining enlightenment, uh, he had some uh, uh, punishment, such as when he was going out to collect arms food, uh, the uh, stick, somebody threw a stick, it landed on him and hurt, it hurt him. And people who threw the stick did not want to uh, hit him. Did not want them. They did not want to hit him by the, by throwing the stick. But the stick, it is just uh, uh, landed on him, rocks and so forth. And that way he had a lot of uh, injuries. So I 
then he was uh, bleeding and and uh, returned to the Buddha. Buddha said, uh, uh, monk, Angulimala, you got to tolerate. This is the reminiscence of your karmic consequences. So you got to tolerate it. That all is over in this life. You will no more rebirth, therefore you will no longer have any of these things in future. So this sort of thing can happen. Even the Venerable Moggallana, he was a fully enlightened monk with supernatural powers. He was uh, beaten to death by uh, some uh, uh, thugs. Uh, so he died of that. Even he could not prevent it from happening, but it happened. So this is the residues of the comic consequences. But um, Bhante, I have a question about this. So if even an arahant has residual karmic consequences, there has to be an executor for that karma. So some people, like from the village, they um, caused Angulinmala to bleed. And we also know that um, like cutting or hurting an arahant puts this person in hell. So these people have to be the executor of the Kama of the Arahant, and as a result, they end up in hell. Yes. That, but he could not prove. He tried six times. Six times he tried to escape the beat, beat mm -hmm. but uh, finally he found it just inescapable, inescapable. Mm -hmm. So he faced it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the next question, Bante, is how can one fight against distractions in this digital age? Oh, how can one prevent his action? How can one uh, prevent distraction, being distracted in this digital age? Not, you know, there's so many distractions on the phone, social media, and all these things. How can you prevent being always distracted in our modern age? <laughs> it actually is not very easy, very difficult because uh, uh, media is uh, full of uh, information, all sorts. So we cannot uh, plug our ears and, you know, we be cannot become blind. Therefore, we have to be mindful, uh, restrain our senses. This remind, reminds me of a discourse that Buddha delivered in Majjhimanika, I call uh, in uh, a noble uh, sense restraint, Indra Bhavana Sutta, uh, Arya Indra Bhavana Sutta. In Majjhiminika, you can find it. There was uh, a sectarian who was not a follower of the Buddha, but another sectarian. One of his disciples came to see the Buddha. And Buddha asked him, how is your teacher uh, training you to uh, be clean your mind? He said, our teacher teaches us uh, uh, sense restraint, indriya bhavana, meditation on senses. So Buddha asked him, how does he teach uh, meditation on senses? He said, don't look at object, don't hear sound. And Buddha said, in that case, the blind and the deaf would be very well trained, and his mind would be pure. Then Buddha said, in this Buddha's dispensation also, he teaches Indriya Bhavana, the meditation on six senses. That is, when one sees an object, immediately become mindful. In instantly, without any, simultaneously, be mindful. 
when you have sound, when you have a smell, taste, touch, and mental state, when it arises, you immediately become mindful and don't cling to it. Whether it's a present, unpleasant, neutral object, the object itself is neither present, nor unpleasant, nor neutral. Your mental state is either pleasant, or unpleasant, or neutral. So it is your own mental state that you have to work with to get rid of that uh, attachment, clinging, craving, chanda, chanda raga. So that is what we have to do. When you, you go, to a, go to a shopping mall, you can hear all kind of music, or people will talk. Of course, uh, you cannot avoid that. Uh, even at that time, you become mindful of impermanence of the sound you hear. You hear all the sounds. Every sound comes as sound waves. These waves are coming one out of the one out of the thousands of them. I think that is a way to uh, deal with those uh, information. Uh, sometimes media, sometimes people in person, uh, the vehicles, airplanes, machines, uh, you know, lawn mowers. <laughs> So many things are uh, arising, and if we remain mindful, we can see only rising and falling, appearing and disappearing of thousands of things. Even if there are no sounds from outside, distraction from outside, we are in a very close uh, uh, place, uh, closed doors and so forth. Still, there are some distractions coming from our own minds. So, there's a training. Okay, so we have to train our mind to deal with anything like that. And that is the Buddha's wonderful teaching. Be mindful of what is happening. Don't get caught in it. And let it happen and go. Let it go. Let it happen. Let it go. Don't try to hold on to anything. Okay. Thank you, Bhante. The next question is about rebirth. Um, basically, the person is asking how to make sure that uh, the unwholesome aspect of karma does not appear to our memory, our mind at the time of passing. So we have uh, accumulated present and also past kamas um, and the influence our time of death, our rebirth. And how can we make sure that we don't have an unwholesome state of mind at the time of our passing to have a good rebirth? Very good. Uh, that is how we have to uh, keep Alert, always be, repeat, always repeat wholesome things all the time, uh, especially mindfulness, uh, mindfulness of breathing. Uh, clean the mind. Don't let any unwholesome mental state arise in the mind. Always repeat. For instance, you, you, you think of the Buddha wonderful, noble qualities of the Buddha. You think of the Dhamma, think of the Sangha. Uh, Sangha means noble disciples of the Buddha, who's enlightened disciples from Sotapanna state or Anta state. Uh, think of them. Think of the Dhamma, think of the Buddha. Remember some very beautiful discourses. So keep the mind occupied with these noble, wholesome things all the time especially when you are uh, going to die. Suppose somebody dies accidentally, accidentally, and still the person mind is always charged with this wholesome mental state. And that therefore, uh, even at the moment of death, those wholesome mental, mental states would be predominantly powerful last thought moments. So that's why there is a 
डिस्कोर्स इन मध्यम निकाय को संखारोपाति सूत्र संखार उपपाति सूत्र दैट मीन्स यू कंडीशन यू माइन संखार मीन्स कंडीशनिंग अकॉर्डिंग टू योर कंडीशनिंग यू विल बी रिबॉर्न दे फोर वी हैव टू डेलिबरेटली कंडीशन आवर माइंड टू हैव हियर क्लीन स्टेट so that according to that we will be reborn in a wholesome state people don't re- realize the power of mindfulness power of mindfulness uh, and therefore we i always encourage everyone to develop the power of mindfulness okay thank you bante um there there's another question i understand that uh, monastics can't declare themselves to be an arahant um do you suggest to think of the past arahant i'm not sure i understand quite the um yeah is it true that uh, a monastic cannot say um okay i understand that monastic can declare themselves as aryan um is that the case can you comment on this if a monastic can say they are an arahant or an aryan is that part of the vinaya that they're not allowed to declare themselves as such um by <coughs> being monastic itself is not uh, uh qualification uh to be to be an arahant there can be many monastics uh, who may be living a life much uh, unwholesome with an unwholesome state my of mind and therefore they cannot they don't enlighten at an enlightenment being monastic is one condition based on that condition the monastic must practice uh, dhamma sila samadhi panya morality concentration and wisdom without practicing this by being a, just purely because of his uh, monastic he cannot attain enlightenment Yes, I think I understand better the question now. There was a clarification. Uh for example, if you're um meeting the the noble sangha, uh you you don't know if um the 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 monastics are arahants. Uh but when you're thinking in terms of the noble sangha, can you um uh think about the past arahants like uh, the arahants from the past at the time of the buddha and that exemplifies the noble sangha uh, those who were there before the attainment of before buddha came into existence yes no no the, the, the noble sangha that we know are arahants from the texts we know like for example venerable sariputta was an uh, arahant venerable mogalana was an or arahant so when we think of the noble sangha should we think about them noble sangha are the members of the community who uh, are considered who have attained a uh, state of enlightenment from uh, so that upon to arantu these are called noble sanghas others are conventional sangha conventional sangha may have some morality or concentration but they may if they don't have totally eliminated their defilements they are not uh, noble sangha but they are conventional sangha <clears throat> so before the buddha attainment of enlightenment there were many saints mendicants monastic in various traditions uh, but uh, uh, they are not qualified to be called 
noble sangha according to the Buddha's uh, uh, definition. Thank you, Bhante. Um, I'd like to go back to the topic of um, uh, death and uh, people that are at the point of dying. Um, how should somebody that is taking care of a person that is about to pass away, uh, how should they behave around this person? What advice, uh, what counsel should they give such a person that is about to pass away? You know, when somebody is passing away, some other people lie around him? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> uh, that is a good question too. Uh, when you are uh, at the deathbed of somebody, that person is going to die, uh, you have to, you, out of compassion, you can do several things. One is uh, you chant uh, very meaningful discourses like uh, Bojanga, uh, then uh, meditation on mindfulness, Anapanasati, and so forth. If you remember, you chant. Secondly, if you don't remember any of those things uh, to recite, uh, you can uh, uh, talk to him or her uh, that, uh, uh, that to, to recall all the wholesome things that person has done. Everybody uh, in their lives uh, do many wholesome things. Occasionally they might be doing something unwholesome, but most of the time they would be doing wholesome things. They are generous practice, they are compassionate activities, uh, they are loving friendliness, they, they are helping others, helping the society, helping their uh, neighbors, and so forth. Oh, the, those are the things that the person sitting or standing next to the person who is going to die should do. Talk to the person in a very... That is what uh, Venerable Sariputta did to Anatha Pindika. It was, of course, quite a more detailed discourse. Uh, so, uh, when the Zariputta asked him, uh, uh, do you like uh, uh, to be born in animal realm? He said, no, no way. Do you like to be born as uh, uh, ghosts and goblins? He said, no. Do you like to be born as human beings? Uh, do you think uh, divine life is better than human life? He said, yes. Do you think divine uh, Brahma world is better than uh, ordinary divine life? He said, yes. Do you think uh, attaining first level of uh, jhana, first jhana, uh, is better than attaining the second jhana and so forth? He brought his mind towards the highest state of uh, uh, neither perception nor non-perception, and then uh, uh, the attainment of stream entry and so forth. He stopped there. Then Ananda Vindiga, uh, his mind was in a very high level. And while he was thinking in that level, he passed, he, he passed away. And then uh, he, has, he became a uh, Sotapan and so forth. So you remind the person of higher form of existence. And then if, you, if possible, even the higher form of existence is impermanent. It is unsatisfactory. It is without self. So we like to be free from all the lower uh, plane of existence, thought of uh, low thought, high thought we have to cultivate, and so forth. We have to talk to the person. 
as long as the person can hear, uh, we talk about all, all some things. And then while we are talking, the person slowly passed away. In uh, Anatha Pindika's daughter, Sumana, when she was going to pass away, uh, the monks went to her and then sat around her bed and then uh, uh, chanted very meaningful discourses. While they were chanting, uh, she passed away. All these are recorded in Buddhist literature, uh, in the discourses, uh, and we have to f remember on our own to uh, talk to such a person, person who is going to pass away, uh, talk about all wholesome, noble things. <clears throat> Thank you, Bhante. Okay. Uh, any other questions? I don't see any any other questions. Um, okay, then uh, actually we have a little more time today. If you don't have any question, we can do some meditation. Okay. Okay. Yes, Bhante. Okay. Okay. May all beings be happy and secure. May all beings have happy minds. Whatever living beings there may be, without exception, weak or strong, long, large, medium, short, subtle or gross, visible or invisible, living near or far, born or coming to birth, may all beings have happy minds. Let no one deceive another, nor despise anyone anywhere, neither from anger nor ill will, should anyone wish harm to another, as a mother would risk her own life to protect her only child, even so towards all living beings, one should cultivate a boundless heart, one should cultivate all the world, a heart of boundless loving friendliness, above, below, and all around, unobstructed, without hatred or resentment, whether standing, walking, sitting, lying down, or whenever awake, one should develop this mindfulness. This is called divinely dwelling here, not falling into erroneous views, but virtuous and endowed with vision, removing desire for sensual pleasures, one comes never again to birth in the womb. With this, let us do meditation. And uh, I will ring the bell afterwards.
By means of this meritorious deeds, may I never join with the foolish, may I join always with the wise, until the time I attain Ibbana. May the suffering be free from suffering, may the fear stuff be free from fear, may the grieving be free from grief, so to may all beings be, from the highest realm of existence to the lowest. May all beings arisen in these terms, with form and without form, with perception and without perception, be released from all suffering and attain to perfect peace. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Thank you, Bhante. Now. Bhante. Thank you, Bhante. Thank you, Bhante. Oh, you are most welcome. Thank you, Bhante. I want to share my metta as I do normally every day. At the end of every session, may all those who suffer in hospitals and taken care of by various compassionate doctors, nurses, and hospital staff, may they recover very quickly and find time to meditate and liberate themselves from all samsaric suffering. May all those doctors, nurses, and hospital staff who are very compassionately taking care of these people, may they also find peace, happiness, and find time to practice Dhamma and liberate themselves from samsaric suffering. May all those who are in various troubled spots, war zones, discriminations, various type of problems, poverty stricken, and so forth, may they all find time to practice Dhamma, liberate themselves from samsaric suffering. May all of those who have uh, lost their loved ones recently <clears throat> and may be grieving, may they be free from grief and find the Dhamma to console themselves, practice meditation and liberate themselves from samsaric suffering. May all of you whose categories have not mentioned, all beings all over the world in ten directions be well, happy, and peaceful, and finally attain liberation. Okay? Now let me end this session. Thank you, Bhante. 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 Thank you, Bhante.